A little bit about myself, though, I'll start with that. I was raised all and grew up in Portland all my life. I've been in Portland. Um, early years of Portland, I became a DJ. Uh, I worked on, I worked for Z100. Later became a DJ on Jammy 95.5, which was owned by Paul Allen at the time. And I'm talking about a DJ who spins records, vinyl, wiki wiki, scratchy scratchy, all that type of stuff. I was doing clubs uh, from the time I was 16 years old up until 36 years old. Uh, I had Akon come to my birthday party. I had the phone number of Exhibit. Um, you guys remember, remember Exhibit? He did yeah. my ride on MTV. Me and him talked all the time. I did the fish show after parties for Jay-Z. Uh, so I was kind of a liberal Democrat without proclaiming it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and that was my time of, in my life, in my season, where I was outside of the church. I grew up in the church, raised in the church. I got to my teenage years, and I wanted to go do the cool stuff. I wanted to go sin and enjoy the, the pleasures of the world. Well, as things progressed around 2008 with Obama and all that type of jazz, I didn't like Obama. I didn't vote for Obama. I actually voted for the king, to be honest with you guys. I didn't vote for Obama either time. I'm not saying the king was a, was a good guy, I think, but I'm just saying that he was, in a way, better than Obama, right? Maybe. Uh, so as things progressed, we saw what was taking place when Trump announced that he was going to run. When Trump announced that he was going to run, during this time, I was street preaching in Portland, Oregon. Every Saturday night, I was down at the clubs because I got out of the club scene, gave my life back to Christ, started going out on the streets of Portland and preaching. Down in, down in the club district, down in Piper Square, I was preaching the Word of God, warning people that they needed to get their life right with Jesus Christ. Basically, perish, you know, hellfire and brimstone type of preaching. So as I'm downtown Portland, going up to Seattle at times, going to Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, going around the nation, preaching the word of God, Trump starts to run, he announces that he's going to run. So the night that Trump won back in 2016, me and a couple buddies decided to go downtown, right after he won the election. We were celebrating and we wanted to preach because we knew that people were rioting in downtown Portland. If you guys remember back in 2016, they started rioting in downtown Portland and caused a million dollars of damage. They marched on I-84, going eastbound, they blocked that all down, they marched down Broadway. We were in the midst of that preaching the word of God with megaphones and banners. So, Fast forward to that, I've been involved in the Patriot movement since then because I voted for Trump the very first time. I didn't jump on the Trump bandwagon, you know, halfway through. I was, I was Team Trump from get go. So through the years, I was, I was at Berkeley for the big Berkeley events when Milo was down there and all that stuff happened in Berkeley. It was a big riot in Berkeley. I was down there for that with some of the people in the Patriot movement. I've been to Marlago outside filming there. I've been to DC because I was part of Blexit. So Trump invited the Blexit back to the White House. So I was actually at the White House um, on the South Lawn the day, or excuse me, the weekend after Trump got out of the hospital from having that virus. You guys remember he had the virus? He had his uh, he had a rally for Blexit. I was there along with a lot of other people. I was at both the million mega marches. And just so you guys know, to be honest with you guys, I am a true insurrectionist. So I was at JC also, and the squid is on there as well. But what I want to talk about with all that said is the deception that comes along with this. There's a lot of stuff within the Patriot movement and within our world 
if we watch things that are happening in the world especially, with the embracing of LGBTQ, with the stuff that happens with our babies, 6 million, 60 million babies, millions of babies are slaughtered, murdered. And the government is behind it. The government is behind it. So we have, within our, even in our, in our patriot movement, unfortunately, we have delusions. Because we've gone from saying God, country, family, or God, family, country, we've gone to politics first and God maybe second. Because there's even a lot of patriots, to be honest with you guys, there's a lot of patriots that don't even serve God. They don't even believe in God. And that's just a fact. That's facts. That's truth. So if we're going to make a stand and we want things to change in America, which I have my personal beliefs in that, because of basically what the Word of God says, I stand more on the Word of God than what, what media says or what we say. I stand more on the Word of God. And I see the writing on the wall. And I'm not trying to be here to be a discouragement, but we have to have some truth about what's taking place. Our nation, unfortunately, we don't have the blessing in the hand of God promise anymore. We don't. And I know that's a hard fact, that's a hard truth to hear, because everybody here today mostly is going to speak about the hope and, and faith and just believing and keep going and we're in the fight, which I get. I'm in the fight as well. I'm in the fight. But my fight that we need to talk about is Jesus Christ. That's the fight. That's the real fight. If we really care about what's taking place in our nation, we need to be talking about people repenting, believing, and trusting in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not what Trump's a good person, but we can't be like rah rah Trump and God and Jesus is second. It needs to be flipped around. That's where the focus needs to be. The focus needs to be Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We have a pledge of, pledge of allegiance. We have, we believe in God, but how much do we really believe in God? How much faith do we really have in God? How much faith do we really have in Jesus Christ? That's the question. We're claiming patriotism. We're claiming Jesus. We're claiming God. But how much do we have? Have we died to ourselves in order to serve Him? To walk with Him daily? To deny our flesh? That's the question. That's how we, what we have to examine within our own selves. So then you come to this, this place, this crossroads, where you're proclaiming, you're on Team Trump, you're talking about Jesus, and then you have your family dynamic. The family gets involved, because the more you're empowered by the Spirit of Christ, the more bolder you get, the more you want to go out and preach and teach and talk to people and share the gospel with people and let people know that, that the condition that they're in sends them to the lake of fire. That's fact. That's Bible. That's Bible. It sends them to the lake of fire if they are in sin, living actively in sin. So then you have family that rises up against you. Well, you can't say that. That's hurting my feelings. You're hurting God's feelings. You're hurting your Creator's feelings. And my Creator, my Jesus, my God comes before your feelings that are sensitive. So I want to read a scripture to you guys because part of this stuff that's taking place, a couple of scriptures, part of this stuff that's taking place is God allowing delusions over our land and especially what's happening in the Middle East right now. Because what's happening in the Middle East, you guys got to pay attention to this really closely. Some, some people are believing it's a Psalms 83 war that's taking place. When you start to see these nations rise up against Israel, we need to pay attention. And obviously they're trying to do that with America. I've never in my life have seen people in the streets fighting over Israel and, and, and Palestinians. In America, I've never seen that. And we're starting to see that on our news. People are fighting, Palestinians are fighting, the Muslims are fighting, the Israelis, which is a whole holy war that the media don't even want to talk about. They don't want to get to the, the, the meat of it about this stuff is biblical prophecy that's happening in Israel. But Israel is under a strong illusion, delusion. They're blinded just like America and the leaders are blinded. So in Isaiah 66, 4, God says, I, will, I also will choose their delusions. I will bring 
their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I sped, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delight not. So they were, they choose, these people choose stuff. They choose not to serve God. But then they want the blessings of God. It can't go both ways. It cannot go both ways. We have to choose. But one big verse I want, I want to say that definitely can fit for the Patriot Movement, for our lives, and dealing with family. Again, we have to stand on one side or the other. We have to draw the line in the sand. Romans 1, 18 through 32. For the wrath of God, and here's the trick about this. Most believers, if you're Christians in here, we love to talk about the love of God. We don't like to talk about the wrath. We don't like to talk about God, uh, the consequences that God will bring. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold not truth and unrighteousness, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So that there are no, without so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish their foolish heart was deceived. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the unincorruptible corruptible God into an image made of like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves. They dishonor their bodies. The LGBTQ, they dishonor their bodies. And that is a big agenda that is being pushed in our society and in the world. In fact, in 2011, Obama signed something that he said in order to give aid to other countries, they had to get on board with the LGBTQ stuff. Obama did that. Did God use Obama? Yes, because it's all part of the plan. Just like he's using, just like he used Trump, and just like he's using Biden. It's all part of God's purpose, all part of God's plan. So the question is, well, what do we do? Right? The question is, what do we do about the stuff that's happening in our society? The thing I can tell you what to do is open up the Bible, take some time, get with God, repent if you need to repent, and as the Bible says, choose this day whom you're going to serve. Amen, you guys. Thank you for the time. Fun and great job, brother. Great job. The Bible is the greatest selling book of all time, and it is not coincidence. You don't need to start with a reading plan. It's the one book that you can pick up, open, and it will actually read you. The only book that will do this. Pick it up today, and it will read you. It will meet you right where you are.